Hi, in this lesson, we're going to talk about quality of service. Quality of service in DDS is a feature that really makes uh, DDS unique and different and more valuable and more capable than many of the other communication protocols that you might be familiar with. So let's get started. So what is QoS? Well, QoS is a fancy way of saying configuration parameters. <clears throat> These parameters uh, can be used to configure DDS for a variety of things. For example, end-to-end -end behavior, how DDS delivers data from senders to receivers, can help you configure or create a fault-tolerant system, can help configure uh, data durability, which is the uh, feature of being able to store and forward data to new applications who want your data. Resource configuration. You might need to configure or want to configure how DDS allocates memory or spawns threads. Discovery configuration. So discovery is the process in which two applications find out about each other, and of course, you'll want to configure that. And finally, there are some very uh, uh, implementation-specific configuration um, that each DDS implementation might offer to its users. So QoS are applied to a DDS entity. There are six DDS entities. Domain participants, publishers, subscribers, data writers, data readers, and topics. And each entity has its own set of QoS policies that configure it. Different entities, of course, can be configured to behave differently. Even different instances of the same entity, for example, you have more than one data writer or more than one data reader, can be configured to behave differently with different values for its QoS policies. There are 56 QoS policies offered by RTI Connects DDS. And 25 of these policies are specified by the DDS standard. So fundamentally, any DDS implementation that can be called DDS should be offering these 25 QoS policies. And then additional 31 QoS policies are extended policies that are specific to the RTI Connects DDS implementation. If you want to kind of get an overview, a quick overview of the QoS policies, uh, I suggest the QoS Policy Reference Guide. This is basically QoS in a nutshell. It doesn't go into detail of how to use them, but it does provide a good idea of why they exist and what they might be useful to do. And you can find the, um, this in the link below online or in your installation of Connects DDS. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, and end behavior how data is delivered from writers to readers. Here's a couple of QoS policies that, uh, can, that might configure that. Uh, one is the reliability QoS policy, and the other one's time-based filter. Data durability. Um, how much and how long should data be made available to future readers? So if you're sending data now, but uh, an application hasn't started, DDS has the ability to be configured to automatically send new data readers old data. And here are uh, three QoS policies that can be used to configure that feature, uh, history, durability, and lifespan. If you're building a system that requires fault tolerance, so basically a mission critical or a safety critical system, that means uh, if any part of your system fails, uh, there should be a backup or a redundant component that takes over. Well, the ownership, liveliness, and deadline QoS policies offered by DDS um, can be used to help you build a system that's fault tolerant. Discovery, when two applications start up, they need to find out about each other. They need to find out what they, each other sends and what each other receives. And this is something that you can configure using the discovery or discovery config QoS policy. Infrastructure, how Connects DDS interacts with the local operating system, including memory allocation, including access to the network interfaces. So resource limits, transport built-in are a couple of QoS policies that might be relevant here. And of course, all these QoS policies, this is only a subset of the 56 QoS policies that are offered by DDS. And we will be talking about some of these QoS policies in details in other lessons. Let's talk about compatibility. So when you're setting QoS policies, some of those policies only affect local behavior. That's behavior of the application in which DDS is being used. For policies that only affect local behavior, those values can be set independently 
from the values set by other applications also using DDS. Other QoS policies may affect end-to-end -end behavior, and the policies that may affect end-to-end -end behavior need to be set compatibly between publishing and subscribing applications. This is called request versus offered. And basically RxO, or request versus offered, is a contract that sets compatibility requirements between sending applications and receiving applications. RxO policies must be compatible for the initial connection between a reader and a writer, as well as for continuous data delivery as a continuous operation. So more about request versus offered. RxO QoS policies, publishing application are said to offer a level of service for a QoS policy. Subscribing applications are requesting a level of service. When we're considering whether or not an RxO policy is compatible or settings for an RxO QoS policy is compatible, we're taking a look at the offered level and the offered level of service must meet or exceed the requested level of service. For example, if a data reader requests data at 10 times a second, 10 hertz, the writer must offer to send the data at least at 10 hertz. It may send the data faster than 10 hertz, but it must at least send data at 10 hertz. Another example, if the data writer offers to send data reliably, the data reader can request to receive data reliably or not reliably. Not reliably is also known as best effort. The reliable level of service is higher than the best effort level of service. So as long as the writer is offering a higher level of service than the reader, that's okay. But if the reader requests a higher level of service than the writer, then that's not okay, that's incompatible. Let's look at the RxO QoS policies in more detail. First, only nine out of the 25 QoS policies have RxO contracts. None of the extended QoS policies have RxO implications. Here are the nine. These nine QoS policies must be set compatibly between the sending application and the receiving application in order for DDS to allow a connection between the two. Of these nine, two, deadline and liveliness, are continuously monitored to make sure that the RxO contract is maintained throughout operation. Let's take a look at the requested versus offered QoS contract uh, in operation. Here we have an application on the left. It has a data writer that's sending data for a topic at a particular offered level of QoS. If a data reader starts up, the data reader will request data at a requested level of QoS. What DDS is going to do upon discovery is they're going to check. We're going to check for QoS compatibility. If the offered meets or exceeds the service level requested by the subscriber, then everything is compatible and the connection is established between the data writer and the data reader. On the other hand, if we check and they're not compatible, we do not establish communications. So the data writer will not be able to send its data to the data reader when the QoS is incompatible. In addition, both the sending application and the receiving application will have a notification that we found somebody, but they have an incompatible QoS and therefore you're not being connected. How do you detect incompatible QoS settings in a system? Well, when you have incompatible QoS settings, the data readers and data writers in which this incompatibility exists will not be able to communicate. How do you detect which ones actually have this problem? You can install listeners using a DDS API, and these listeners will be called back by DDS when it determines that a data reader and data writer has incompatible QoS. You can also take a look at the log messages. When DDS determines that there's incompatible QoS, DDS will output log messages. There's also external tools that you can use to examine a running system. You can start up RTI Admin Console, and in the Match Analysis view, it'll show you when it finds incompatible QoS. In summary, quality service is really a set of configurable parameters in DDS that allows you to control 
anything from end-to-end -end behavior or resource allocation. They're both DDS standard QoSs as well as vendor extensions. These QoS values are applied to the DDS entities that you create. For some of these QoSs, there's something known as a request for software, where the reader is requesting QoS at a certain level of service, and the writer is offering to provide a certain level of service. And these values must be set compatibly for a connection to happen between the reader and the writer. 